Kenny wasn't awful. Was he bad? Sure. To me, though, I looked at it like he was just a little unsure of himself in this game. And I wonder when we talk moment being too big, talk about the team being rattled. I thought he was one of the guys that it really showed Um, in the preseason, in the last seven games last season. The things that Kenny did that stood out were anticipating throws. It didn't he didn't have to see this guy get open. He could trust and he could throw him open or he could put it in a position where he knew that guy would be at. And we said that's the difference between just average versus good versus elite players. Good or average players, they got to see it. They got to see you be open for I really won't cut that thing over there. The elite guys, though, they anticipate it, man, or they're throwing you open. At times for Kenny, I thought yesterday he was waiting to physically see it be open before he was willing to put it out there. And when you're talking about the speed of the game, what's the difference? In college, sometimes you can wait to see the guy get open because those receivers and the speed of the defenders aren't as fast. So you can still get that ball out there and it's not going to be late. It's not going to be behind. At the NFL level, if you wait to see it get open, it's too late because by the time you throw it, that window has closed. No different as a running back. If you're running that ball and you see that gap open, if you don't hit it right now, it's too late to come back to it. It's too much speed out there. So when I'm looking at Kenny, at times I felt like that was the big part. Then you get the late throws where it's just behind a little bit. I know with the Deontay Johnson, when he slipped, everybody talks about that. And they try, oh, man, it was interception because he slipped. You look at the placement of that pass. It doesn't matter if he slipped or not. Shavarius Wood is going up to go get that because he it looked almost like a back shoulder throw for an outbreaking route. That can't happen. But that was more so, like I said, man, just what was going on right there. That's not a he's not capable of it. No different than him missing the, the slant pass or the post to Deontay. We've seen him make that throw. We see him step, drive, transition away from back foot to fourth foot and rip that thing like it's nothing. We've seen him make the jump ball throws. So yeah. that's why for me, it was more so I was disheartened because I'm like, dude, you know you can make these throws. We know you can make these throws. I've seen you do this practice and games. So why get in this moment, week one, with all this hype, all this backing, and now this is when it happened. But that's why I ultimately said, man, it's week one. And if they truly were routed, if they truly got in there in the moment, just felt a little bit too big. Heck, take it on the chin. You acknowledge it, accept it, learn from it, and move on because that offense and Kenny specifically are a lot better than what they showed. And if they make just a handful of stuff that we even talked about today, the two Deontay passes, stuff like that, it's like that's a whole different ball game. Just those two, it's a whole different ball game. It just feels different. The flow is different. Then you can start to run it a little bit more. It's hard to even say, man, yeah, we want to run there it. There was more. even like a couple passes yeah. to Muth where. Pickett and him are off. It now, Pick, Pickett off. would bring up miscommunication or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it could be whatever. No. It could be whatever. They were off. But when you're off, and like we said, it's just simply a game of inches. So if you're slightly behind on throws, what was the first thing we saw DJ do on the on the little slant page? He was like, yo, just emotion to it. It was a little low. It was a little behind me. I thought that all day that was Kenny. He was just slightly late and slightly behind on his throws. And I really thought it was because of his eyes. Him just waiting to see it versus just trusting it. And sometimes when you transition from preseason to regular season, that does happen. Solely because in the preseason, if you throw a pick deep, does it matter? No. Because you know, man, this is preseason. It don't count. It ain't on my record. It's not on your record. It's not going to kill us, win and loss. None of that. We ain't even really trying to win. That's why we subbing dudes out. But yeah. in the regular season, when we talk about, hey, man, ball security, got to win the turnover battle. Hey, you know, for four quarters, man, they hunt the ball. Now you get out here and you're thinking, man, I, I, psh, let me make sure I don't mess this up now. Let me make sure I, all right, it ain't going to be on me today. And that was kind of how I felt. And the Niners have good players. Absolutely. I mean, it's particularly oh, come on across now. the middle of the field. You got to tip your cap that. to them yeah. as well, man. Absolutely. Between Fred Warner, we know who Fred Warner is, arguably the best linebacker in football. Still can't believe he dropped the pick that hit him in the face. But still, Hufanga, oh, little little Troy, yeah, he low key looked just like Troy running that thing back with the pitch, I don't bro. Like that. He looked just no, like I, him, I bro. Like Holy that. smokes, like he that. looked just like him, man. But those are some of the things, man. But like I said, that was how 
you know, I felt about Kenny. And then just on the other stuff, it was some of the pressure. I thought offensive line wise, we could have been a lot better. Too inconsistent. Yeah, that across the board, man. Too inconsistent, bro. Too inconsistent. Because there were times they had really good protection for mm-hmm. Other times it was god awful. Yep. So that's kind of the story of the whole game, too, because. You can talk about the Steelers secondary. There were times Steelers secondary, not bad. Mm-hmm. Steelers pass rush, not bad. Mm-hmm. But then other times just non-existent. Yep. Same with the linebackers getting for the run stopping. All right. Sometimes it was there. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. we're, we're starting to feel this and out. Some and then McCaffrey context. Would, would bust yeah. one off. And there's some context. with. I'm sure we'll get to it um, as we continue to talk about this thing. But absolutely, I even felt man. that with the receivers, too. Absolutely. Like, they would show the replays talk on about, the TV. Dude, talk about it, And Deke. Pickett would be back there. Talk about it, Deke. And everyone is covered. I'm talk like, I don't know it, who Deke. this dude's going to throw Thank to. you, Deke. So I know it's easy to say, oh, this is all on Kenny, or this is all on Matt Canada. It's all O-line. It's like, no, there were times where Call was good, O-line was good, Kenny was good, and dudes didn't win one-on-ones. The same way we look at Brandon Ayuk win his one-on-ones, the same we looked at George Kittle at times with his one on ones, McCaffrey with his one on ones. It go on the receivers too. Everybody has to play their part in this thing. Offensive line, they got to win their one on ones. You know, that's some of the stuff that I guess it's just across the board, man. Sometimes you just have a bad day. It's bad game. I like it was like, bro, it's a bad day, bro. <laughs> Sometimes it's like that, man. And it happened early, and things just snowballed. Forty yeah. ers good team. Mm-hmm. So that's what the result could potentially look like. Yeah. But, hey, it, I mean, if we get one of those touchdowns in the second half when we're driving, exactly. who even knows after that? It's they, just we, we missed the fourth down. The T- you, are, you get the off. TJ sag, and it's like, all right, now we're getting momentum back. We're feeling energy. But like you said, just slightly off. Not major, but just enough. If you want to hear in terms of how I would critique the Matt Canada part, I know today people are going to bring up jet sweeps. So they're going to bring up, you know, oh, it's so predictable. To me, that was still not an issue. I looked at just that sequence that we were just talking about in the red zone. I would have liked to have just more intentional isolation for a GP or a Darnell Washington in a situation like that. When the field gets condensed, we know it's a lot harder mm-hmm. to have guys just win one-on-ones. So if you feel like you have a size mismatch, isolate it where now I don't have to worry about – what covers they're playing? Are they zoning this? Is it men? And now, like we talked about with the move stuff, we miscommunicate. How are you seeing this? Or the other players where it's like, y'all running back there, but they in the zone right here. They guessed right. So you're stuck. Certain stuff where it's just like, man, just put Darnell by himself over there. Make it go one-on-one jump ball. Or put GP over there and make it go one-on-one We tried, one but ball. again, just missed. Right, but Just missed. They did. How, how yeah. Hell of a catch by Pickens. There. Was, though, I was bro. like, yeah, I it jumped was. out of my seat. I was like, wait, it are was, you bro. kidding me? It was. But low-key, I was pissed because I believe it was two plays before that. That was the time to throw it to him. He was running a seven route. Or, yeah, he was running a corner route out of the slot. And that was the one where it was like, bro, this is the throw. This is the time to make it. It's way easier, way more room, way, you know, just in terms of giving Pickens the ability to go up and be him. Whereas when he came back to it, it's like now you're throwing the jump ball to the front corner. It's just not as, it's not the same amount of space for you to be one way or the other. You almost got to be perfect, like we saw with Ayuk. So yeah, uh, yeah. with Pickett though, real quick, agree. He was just he was off. He was off the whole day. But what gives me hope, or what still gives me op- optimism, and why I'm not backing down from my takes that this dude is going to be an elite guy by the end of the season, is that everything that you just mentioned is the opposite of what we've seen from Kenny mm-hmm. late regular season, even in the preseason. Like, we were talking about Kenny being, like, inaccurate, not yeah. ma- not not being there on his reads and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's not Kenny. That's Correct. not we've come to know him to be. So you could just chalk it up bad game, week one yeah. of the regular season, playing a really good 49ers defense, and mm-hmm. now we move on. We get to week two, and I'm sure uh, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder just like the rest of this team. No, 100%. And that's the vibe that I got from Kenny, even watching him in the postgame interview. It's like, yo, he's not trying to run from it. He's not trying to make an excuse for it. He's accountable. And that's the thing that I love. Like, sometimes that is the beauty of having a less established quarterback is you get to see him take accountability and him receive that type of, like, in-house you know, guys calling it out, guys talking to him about it. Whereas for seven men or guys that are elite like that tier, it's hard to talk anything like that. And as a team, it can make it a little bit challenging. Right here, there isn't going to be any, man, well, why didn't this guy get talked to? Or why does he get talked to? Or why does that versus that? You don't have to worry about that 
because Kenny is still going to be heavily a part of the dudes having to be held accountable as well, man. So in this sense, it is a benefit for us as well where he's at right now, man. But like I said, it's one game, bro. It's one game. It's one game. It just mm -hmm. sucks that this is the only thing the, we have yep. right now for the regular season. Absolutely. Week one, we don't have any other so all games the, for all 2023. All the naysayers are loving That's it. all they have. And they are that's, and, that's and all to they them, have right now. this has confirmed and validated <laughs> everything that they felt. And for the dudes that are supporting it, you're like, bro, this is really, I don't have any ammo right now because this is what you're going to go off of. But like I said, man, if you look at the context of it, like we're talking about, there is a lot to feel still positive about but at the same time we're not going to sit here and act like the guys don't have to play better they have to play better if this if you're still missing these same throws three weeks four weeks later that's a different convo if we're still talking about run fits lack of phys not lack of physicality just lack of consistent execution if we're talking about that a couple weeks from now it's like bro this is this is who you are but for right now this is the benefit of the doubt you say based on what we've seen this is the outlier right now. This is the one small it game is? sample size. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. write off everything I saw from last year with pick. I mean, you want to talk about tight window throws and accuracy. That's what the dude was doing in very yeah. clutch situations. We saw him Tight window throws, accuracy. Saw it all preseason. Heard about it all in training camp. He's getting better and better. Connor like, Hayward. Court one game. Think about Connor Hayward versus Baltimore. The two men running up the seam. The linebacker inside. Kenny throws it on the road. Connor catches it, right? That's the exact same throw and catch that we saw him make, but then that was the play that yesterday got picked. It's literally the same throw we've seen him make. One, he just had a little bit more air to get over top. That when he came in a little bit flatter, and Fred made a heck of a play going up and getting it, man. And that was probably he was just forcing it at that you point because be I think that was that, that was, was on late. first and yeah. ten, and mm -hmm. yeah, he even admitted, but it was late like, in the game though. Yeah, it's forcing. Yeah, because we had to do it at some yes, point. I just wish yes. those type of throws would have been to Pickens a little bit more. I agree. Like, at that point, come on, let's just chuck it off to him and but, see if he could do something spectacular. But this was the part for me with the Pickens part. Why wasn't he targeting him? Because it wasn't as if Pickens isn't out there. He's not running around. And that goes back to the part of how safe were you trying to be out there? Remember we talked 50-50 balls? I wonder, after he threw that first one up to DJ, DJ slips, it was picked even though, like I said, I thought the throw wasn't Kenny's best throw. I thought it was still late and inside. Perhaps a bad decision. But, like, if but, DJ doesn't slip, he may get right, hands on or something. Be, yeah. Right. I wonder, does that keep his confidence where he's willing to take some of those shots out there to GP? Whereas after that happens, and you're in this game, and they score as well. It's not like we yeah, did. We that got to stop. It's like, bro, you in that stadium, like, all right, bro, I ain't got time to be just taking these chances to you right now, GP. I got to make sure that we... We don't get ran up out of here because if that gets picked because we know Ward is still a good player, now we really got another issue on our hands. So now let's kind of dial it back a little bit. We can't be as aggressive right now. And he did take a shot to the middle of the game. Like that was mm -hmm. it was probably it like was. a 40, 50 yard yeah. pass overthrew him. It yeah. looked like Pickens was to slow. Me, there was just I, a weird me, timing thing open. there. It wasn't open. And I thought it was a different style of route. Typically for Pickens. Staying close to the sideline vertical is his game. That one was a little bit stemmed and then vertical, but Ward did a good job getting hands on him. And what have we talked about with Pickens? Not a lot of separation. In that vein right there, the way that DB was able to stay on top of the route without the separation, it really hindered him from even being in position to go up and do anything acrobatic. And then you kind of get the overthrow as well. Like I said, I don't think it would have truly been an overthrow if Pickens is full release and he's able to go. But because the DB was able to jam up the way that he did, it really just threw the timing of everything off to me, man. Today's show is brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook. You know the top-rated sports booking app. It's football season. Plenty of people out here trying to have a little fun. This is the app that you go to. This is the app that you use. This is the app that we use. And why do we use it? Because it is safe. It is secure. But more importantly, Deke, it's reliable. Just like your barber. Your barber delivered a fire cut for you. That's reliability right there. All right? Yeah. And that's what DraftKings Sportsbook is. They are reliable. And y'all know if we're going to talk about them, we're going to talk about them for a reason. And that's because we have a promo code. So when you first, you know, decide to hop into this game called sports gambling, sports betting, sports booking, all that good stuff, you're going to have that first time when you're putting that wager in. So when you're on DraftKings... And it's your first time making a bet. All right? You're going to have to put a little deposit down. If you put the minimum, which is $5, and 
and you put the promo code MOTES along with said minimum, you will instantly receive $200 in free bets. It's a beautiful concept. It's like you scratch my back, I'm going to really scratch your back. You can't go wrong with it, baby. So I love that part about them. But at the same time, Deke, it's not always butterflies and rainbows. Sometimes people struggle. Sometimes people can't handle all the fun right. that's associated with sports betting. And sometimes you or someone you know might have a gambling problem. They might need some crisis counseling or even referral services. Those people that live in New York, I'm sitting there on the screen right now for you to text. And under that number for everybody else, it's a number you could call. And that number is 1-800-GAMBLER. I said a 1-800-GAMBLER. 